Okay, so in the last part of Chapter 5, I want to discuss profile leveling. We just recently talked about uh, differential leveling, where you can go through and you can place elevations on those turning points, on new positions, on every everywhere that you go. Well, profile leveling is doing a similar thing, but in this instance, we're, we're interested not only in just some turning points or not only elevations of certain points, we're interested in the elevations, the topography along a certain reference line. So in the past, we've discussed and talked about stationing and where those lines are. Stationing is always in the horizontal plane. Okay, so we're going to then take what that horizontal plane or that station or that uh, reference line in that horizontal plane. Now we're going to say that there's some specific points along, those, along that line that we do want to know what the elevation is. For example, this is something uh, down the line which you'll be able to take a look at. If you look up on the top here, this is representative of a station center line right there. Okay, along that center line, then you want to know what are the elevations, where are the changes in elevation, whatever it is. So you can then design something. In this instance here, what they've done is they're designing a vertical curve inside here. Okay, so what, the, what that allows you to do then is come through here and you can get elevations along certain points as you go all the way throughout here, you know, wherever it may be, wherever changes in grade of elevation are. And then what it allows you to see is this line right here, this is what the existing train looks like. And then you're going to come right here, and here's what your design is going to be. Your vertical curve as you go through there. Okay, so to be able to do a proper design, you have to know what the layout of the land is going through that center area, through you know whatever it is you're, you're designing. In this instance, it's a road. So somehow we need to take the opportunity to be able to figure out how to gain elevations along that reference line and center line. So that's what we call profile leveling. So if you take this for example, so in the beginning here, I've said that I, I've staked out this, uh, this station center line right here from one side of uh, engineering east and going southeast a little bit. So I've got my, uh, my turning points and I have uh, and my benchmark over here set it to be 100. Okay, so, so the thing is, along this line here, along my center line reference line, whether it be at uh, increase, you know, uh, full stations or be half stations or partial stations, it doesn't have to be right on it. It just has to be somewhere along that line that we know a distance along that line to be able to reference then an elevation to that distance along the line. So for example, if I set up my instrument right here, so just like we talked about in differential leveling, first thing I'm going to do is get a back sight. I get a back sight reading on the benchmark so I know what the elevation is. Well, the first thing that happens now is I go and start on that reference line, and now I get what's still considered to be a foresight, because what I'm doing now is I measure right there, and I'm establishing now an elevation right on that point right there on the ground. So I get an elevation there, establish it there. I move now to the next point that I'm interested in, and that's again another foresight, not a back sight. It's again another foresight. So because what I'm doing again is establishing an elevation along that line. So again, remember, back sites, you get the elevation. Four sites then establish the elevations. So if I continue along here, I take another spot along that line, establish an elevation there. Move it again, establish an elevation there. Keep going, moving, and establish another one, and establish another one there. And this one happens to be, we'll say this one's at 0 plus 50. So you can see the ones previous weren't always exact. They weren't at 0 plus 10 or 0 plus 20. It was just some point right in there that had a change of elevation, had a change of grade, I should say. Okay, so after we get that, we're finished taking those foresights because we can't really go any further. And so now what we want to do is we go over to our turning point, and this is our official foresight. This is the one now that as we establish elevation on here, we can then use that to continue on our, our process. So now we move the instrument. So now we've got the rod still over there at turning point one. We get a back sight there, because remember, that's what was established. We don't go along the reference line, because those are just points along it. It's anywhere along the ground, but the turning point is something fixed that we can use to establish elevations off of again. So now that we established an elevation on turning point one, we take a back sight now on it. Now I'm going to go over here and take another foresight along these points along the center line of this, uh, this stationed, uh, stationed line that we have here. So then I continue on and take another point right around there 
where I'm looking for is anything that has a uh, any change of grade, any significant change of grade. And then, so here again, another example, another foresight. And you can see I took a took a bigger jump along there. That's because there there wasn't any big change of grade throughout there. Same thing here, another foresight. Then, since I can't go any further along, along that line, I then go over to another turning point and again establish an elevation there. So every point that we stopped along the, the reference line, we established elevations along there. We also knew, based upon what we staked upon the ground there, whether pulling a tape or using a, an EDM or using anything else, we knew the distance along that line. So based upon knowing the distance along the line, then we have an elevation. So now we have two things that are referenced distance from a beginning point to a certain point along that line and now we have an elevation which allows us to create then a profile and to, to gain what that terrain actually really looks like going through that center line. So take an example here. You're going up and over the mountains and down, up and down, up and down. You can see here that I have one instrument set up right here, another instrument set up right there, another instrument that was set up right there. You can see that I've only got a couple points that are my, my benchmark and my turning points. I have a benchmark here, turning point, which also then turning point, and then at the end over here, which is another benchmark that I'm using. So if I was just doing differential leveling, I'd only have a back sight and a foresight, and then I'd have another back sight and a foresight, a back sight, and a foresight to end. And that's it. And again, the four sites then establish the elevation at TP1. Then I use TP1 as a back site where that elevation had been established to move forward to TP2. And TP2, again, to move forward all the way up to benchmark uh, store with another elevation over there. Now, what we want to do, though, is as we go throughout this process, we need to say that, all right, well, we want to establish elevations here, 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 and here. So all these little points right there, we want to establish elevation. So again, it's all based upon the one backside at the first one, backside at benchmark road. Establishes our elevation here, the height of the uh, instrument, or rather the uh, elevation of our uh, sight line. If I could write that right. Okay, then if we know the elevation of our sight line, we can look anywhere we want and tell then an elevation of any any random point that we're looking at. So again, it's stationed along through here that we know what it is. So now in the notes here, to be able to make sure we understand what's going on, let's look at it first as if it was just differential leveling. We start off with an elevation. We had a back sight, which gives us a height of instrument. Okay, then over to TP1, which we had then a, uh, a foresight, which then established an elevation. And so forth, so on and so forth, as you go throughout the uh, throughout that process. Okay, but now what we're trying to show you here is that we have an elevation that we start with, take a back sight, get that height of instrument right here, and now look what we have: all these intermediate sights, intermediate foresights, as you get to here, 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 all of those, as you go all throughout there. So it's the same process as we're now establishing elevations, which are these right here along that line. And then when you can't go any further, you set a turning point, move the instrument, and you continue moving on and continue moving forward. So these are just sample notes I want you to take a look at so you can understand and see what we're looking at. On the right hand side here, these are just descriptions as to what it is at, the, at that exact point that you're looking for. This is the other key portion over here. These are your stations. This is so you know where you were along that line to then tell you, so, so at 100 feet down this line, I knew that at that line that I had an elevation then at 364.1. So this is key over here. Your stationing is key to know the position along the line, and then your intermediate foresight center would determine the elevations at those specific points along those lines. So now if you put it all together, so here your notes on the right hand side here. Here's what we just did on the top. Now on the bottom, this is our profile. This is our profile shown right here that you're moving right along here. It's exactly what the uh, what the terrain looks like to match what it is up there. 
So what this allows you to do now along that center line that we just did, now we have it. We have the exact the existing conditions, and then what we want to do is then all right, let's design a grade. And then design a grade that's going to try and minimize the cut, minimize the fill that we're going to have inside here. And in this instance, it's showing an example of just a grade line of just minus point zero, uh, minus zero point one five percent to to do that. So now from this point on, you can continue on and do all your, your cuts, your fills, you, you can do your calculations, do any type of remaining design that you're looking for based upon the information here. So you have existing grade, then whatever your design is going to be. So this is now what we consider to be a plan and a profile. Up top here can be a, uh, it's still kind of a side profile view. The bottom here is your actual uh, actual line profile. So is it, you know, because we're looking at the vertical difference right here. This is in vertical, and this along here then is in the horizontal in your stations. So again, one last example to show here for plan and profile view is this. So this is more, you know, something along the lines that you'd be uh, encountering as you get uh, get out in the professional world. So I've got a, sta a center line right here. You can see that it's stationed all the way along through there. Okay, and that stationing follow suit all the way down here. This is what these are all representing right here. That's your stationing. So then along those lines then you stop at certain random points. Say I'm going to stop here, I'm going to stop here, here, here. Take a couple points throughout there, whatever it may be, to then know what the existing road looks like, what that existing road surface really is. So again you can see here, what they've done here is that they did. They created another vertical curve throughout there based upon you know the, the existing conditions to be able to, to make up a new design here in the end but they're making some new design whatever uh, you know whatever it may be so this is then what we consider to be your plan and your profile now the idea is as you do that all you're doing again throughout your your plan your profile is that you're just trying to create you have a center line you have some reference line that you're going to follow and you want to know what the elevations are throughout there that way if you do any design work you know what to expect of any changes 